Okay, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My dear students, welcome to lesson three of Surah Tul Mulk. And my name is Tasneem, aka Ukhti. I'm the founder of Good Tree Arabic Academy, an online academy dedicated to teaching Muslims around the world the beauty of the Quran and the beauty of the Arabic language. So inshallah, today I'll be telling you about um, Surah Mulk, you know, the next few ayahs of Surah Mulk, we've been doing uh, the tafsir of it for the past few days. And just before we start, I want to welcome you, O oh seekers of knowledge, welcome to the Garden of Jannah. As you know that, subhanAllah, it's been a busy day, but we are all here today to, um, to spend some time to remember uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in fact, in a hadith, it is mentioned that... Um, that the angels they roam around the earth trying to find gatherings in which the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned and when they find a gathering such as this such as the uh, that has the name of Allah the dhikr of Allah uh, mentioned and remembered then they pile upon that gathering and they cover the gather the gathering with their wings and they call their you know their associates and their friends to come and join the gathering as well and until there become so many angels that they pile up all the way into the sky. And um, to the effect, the hadith goes that um, the angels, they'll, they'll say to Allah, Ya Allah, um, actually, I can't remember exactly the, the, the words of the hadith, but, you know, basically, they, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked these angels that, why are these people here? And the angels say they're here to remember you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the meaning more, more or less that let, like, let them have glad tidings that I have forgiven them. So Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those people who are forgiven by remembering him in these gatherings. Alhamdulillah. So inshallah, today's content, we're going to be going through verses 13 to 21. Um, so we're going to be talking about the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of all and nothing is hidden from him. Allah has made the earth very obedient and submissive to man. And we're going to go through some interesting perspectives about the earth, okay, and the creation of the earth. And just, you know, some different perspectives about how we look at the earth. Uh, the fact that man should never forget his Lord and because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can destroy um, anyone by sending a natural calamity you know the earth is obedient and submissive to man but allah can make the earth or the skies or the sea turn against mankind who is the one who holds up the skies who is the one who is the origin of sustenance and risk and we're also going to be talking about um the birds as well and some other things as well okay now Alhamdulillah, I'm glad to announce that uh, uh, nearly 20 students have signed up for the 40 Hadith of Imam Nawawi, the eight-week Hadith course that I'm going to be starting very, very soon. So there are only 30 spots left for this course. Um, and as you know, I'm giving it away at a very, very huge discount. Usually this course is $400, but I'm making it $100 only for the first 50 people to sign up. And that's it. After 50 people have registered, I'm going to be closing the registration and you won't be able to get a chance to do this course with me at least for another few months. Um, and, or, you know, who knows when it's going to be, you know. So, you know, I really do recommend that if you are on the edge or you are on the fence about doing this course, I would really recommend you sign up today before the spots fill out. Uh, what you will get in this eight-week hadith course, you will get the 40 hadith of Imam Nawawi rahimullah taught in English. So you don't need to know any Arabic for it. I'm going to be teaching it in English. Uh, you're going to get authenticated certificate of ijazah and chain of narration. So I'm going to be giving you a beautiful certificate and the chain of narration will go all the way up to the Prophet wasallam, and it's authenticated. So subhanAllah, it's such an honor to have your name uh, you know, you know, connected with the Prophet them in terms of seeking his knowledge and seeking the words of the hadith. You know, um, inshallah, we're going to be having class for this uh, hadith course every Wednesday night uh, on Zoom, just like we're doing right now from 7 to 8.30 p.m. 
and you'll get recordings if you miss a lesson that's totally fine and there's no homework for this uh, hadith course there's only discussions and attendance and inshallah i mean my dear brothers and sisters this course my goal is to give you those life-changing insights on the true authentic hadith of islam and how to apply it in the 21st century so this course is starting on the 9th of september and alhamdulillah um, i have many students uh, you know who have enrolled in the 12-week course and also in this hadith course and you know i just want to say that it's perfect for beginners or advanced even if you're a revert it's it will be good for you as well those who are looking for a modern day perspective on Islamic teachings and even your children and teenagers can enroll. Okay. And they can sit with you while they're doing the class and they can also get a certificate of authenticated Ijazah as well. There's no age limit. The only age limit is that they know how to speak, <laughs> you know? So I would say maybe seven or eight years old, all the way up to teenagers and all the way, you know, into adulthood, you know, anyone can do this course. And as you know, my way of explaining things is very simple. I use a lot of, you know, metaphors, a lot of pictures, a lot of visual aids, and I try to break it down so that even children, and I have taught children, I've taught high school uh, kids and I tutor, you know, preps and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I have, you know, I know how to break down uh, hard topics in a way that uh, everyone can understand. So you know, Alhamdulillah, I have some children enrolled in this course as well, which is really great. So to enroll for the eight week Hadith course, go to this link. Okay. Uh, if you don't know how to go into this link, you can just message me or email me at Good Tree Arabic Academy um, or Good Tree Arabic at gmail.com or Instagram or Facebook. And I'll send you the link and you can enroll from there. Um, now, everybody, on Friday, I have a very special, special announcement. Okay. So if you're interested in this hadith course, listen up. Okay. Listen up on Friday, day five of this course. Okay. Day five of this week, you know, Surah Mulk, five days. I have a special lesson for you. Okay. On Friday, which is the day after tomorrow, by the way, we will have a mini quiz on Surah Mulk. Okay. Inshallah, as promised, we will have a mini quiz about what we have learned during this past week. And inshallah, we will do a free hadith lesson as well about the hadith of Jibreel. And this hadith is one of the 40 hadith of Imam Nawawi rahimahullah that, you know, we were that, you know, I wanted to put in the eight week hadith course, but because this hadith is so important, it's one of the most important hadiths about Islam, Iman and Ihsan that I believe every single Muslim should know. So that's why, inshallah, I'm on Friday, I'm going to be doing this lesson for free. And we're going to go really deep into the hadith of Jibreel السلام, and how we can apply it into our life. And in fact, this lesson will be kind of like an example lesson, a sort of like a free trial or an example lesson for what we will be doing in the hadith course. And then after that, you can decide if you want to join the course or not. So. I want to just get a gauge of who will attend on Friday for the free course. Go ahead and type yes if you are if you are intending to join on Friday, inshallah. Inshallah, okay. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Friday is a blessed day. And what other day is better to seek knowledge um, other than Friday? So inshallah, go ahead and tell your friends and family about this amazing lesson that I'm going to be doing on Friday about the hadith of Jibreel and um, send them the Zoom link, um, tell your friends and family. And if you want to enroll for the eight week hadith course, then just go to this link. So you can screenshot it, send it to your friends and family. It's only a hundred dollars and you're gonna get, it's for eight weeks, okay? It's an eight week course, <laughs> only for a hundred dollars and you're gonna get a certificate at the end as well. So inshallah, it's, it's, it's all right. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So, let's continue on with the tafsir of Surah Mulk. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-Rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa asirru qawlakum awijharu bih. Innahu alimun bidhati sudur. Okay, so, in the last few lessons, we talked quite a few things about, you know, the universe and the shayateen and the 
Um, so many, so many topics, right? Now, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying in verse 13? وَأَسِرُّوا قَوْلَكُمْ أَوِجْهَرُوا بِهِ Conceal your speech, asirru, or publicize it, وِجْهَرُوا إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ He is the most knowing of that within the breasts. So, the reason of revelation for this ayah is the fact that the kuffar, okay, the time, in the time of the Prophet ﷺ especially, the kuffar, they used to talk behind the Prophet ﷺ's back and conceal their speech. So, you know, they would talk, you know, bad things about the Prophet وسلم, and you know whenever he would pass by they would just stop talking and or they would start whispering or they would just go to another place and they would continue their conversation uh, so that the Prophet وسلم, can't hear but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything that they say whether they say it out loud or they whisper it or they say it with you know um, you know in the in the depths of the night or in the middle of the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything that they say and, and revealed everything to the Prophet sallallahu And of course, if he knows what is in your hearts, as this ayah says, إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ sudur Sudur means the hearts, the breasts, the chests. You know, if Allah knows what's in your heart, of course he knows what you say with your tongue. And of course he sees what you do with your hands and your legs. Yes? Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows um the way that you look at something okay do you look at it like in a squinting way do you roll your eyes um anything allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything right so subhanallah um this is just a testament for us to really understand that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the mulk he lahul mulk he is the malikul mulk right he is the owner of the kingdom and the dominion and even you know, he knows our eye movements. He knows our, our, the things that are going on in our mind. Can you imagine that? Subhanallah. So, you know, we can take this in both ways. You know, we should have fear that, you know, okay, we have to really, um, we have to take care of our thoughts. And, you know, we have to make sure that we're thinking good thoughts and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And also in the other way, we can feel that closeness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. And, you know that Allah understands you, yeah? He knows what's in your heart, even if no one else does, yeah? So a believer is always going to be within hope and fear. And yes, you know, this ayah also reinforces that. Does he who created not know, while he is the subtle, the acquainted? So subhanAllah, you know, the one who created us knows us the best, Yeah. Us human beings, did we create human beings? No, we didn't. We think we know ourselves but the best, but actually, we didn't even create ourselves, okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. So that is why following his commandments is actually the best thing for us. Because, you know, if you make a product or you invent something, okay, um, then you're going to give a manual to whoever uses it, right? And you're going to be the one who knows everything about that invention or, or that, you know, product or anything. Okay. Cause you're the one who made it. Yeah. And if the person uses it in another way, okay. Like, I don't know, they start using the, your iPhone, the iPhone, for example, they start using it in the water or they put it in the microwave or who knows, <laughs> you know, they use it in the wrong way. Then of course, you know, um, it's going to be bad, right? It's not going to be good. So just like that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a manual, okay, for life, okay? We're human beings. We are the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the manual is what? Who knows what the manual for life is? Yes? Type in the comments. What is the manual that Allah has given us <laughs> for life? It is, yes, it is none other than the Qur'an. Of course, it is none other than the Qur'an. So the Qur'an has, you know, it's our handbook for life, okay? It's how we, it's how we live our life. And so following the commandments and staying away from the things that are prohibited, it's the best thing for us, okay? Otherwise, we're going to end up being like the iPhone in the microwave, okay? So that was a weird example, but I think us millennials, we understand what I'm trying to say, right? Okay, cool. So verse 15, 
Allah has made the earth tame for humans. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So, who are the Jala Lakum al Aruda Zalula, Famshu, Fi, Manaki, Biha, Wakulum, Riskli, Wa Ilayhin Nushur? So, it is He who made the earth tame for you. What does tame mean? He means, it means Allah has made the earth submissive for you, stable, okay? And so walk among its slopes and eat of his provision and to him is the resurrection so can you imagine i mean we can be grateful for so many things yeah in this surah mulk right allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that think about this imagine if the earth was not stable okay imagine if there was an earthquake every five seconds yeah would we be able to live in harmony and stability it's absolutely impossible, right? Even just one shake of the earth and that's it. The whole building is coming and crashing down. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the earth a stable place for us to live for most of the part other than the earthquakes and stuff, okay, that happen for certain wisdoms, etc., etc. But I wanted, you know, I was thinking about this in a different perspective, right? I was thinking about this in terms of um, the earth and uh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he actually created the earth. And the fact that, you know, everybody, you know, science and you know, um, geology and stuff. Uh, what is like, how much of the, how much of the earth, the planet earth is covered with land and how much of it is covered with water? So who knows the statistics? Yes, so it's only around one quarter of the earth is filled with land, okay, this land that is stable, okay, and the rest of it, 70% of the earth is covered with water. Can you just imagine that? Subhanallah. Okay, now I was just thinking, imagine if Allah just made the whole earth just sea and water and ocean. We would be living on boats or I don't know how we would be living, but imagine, you know, I just, I was just thinking like, um, how would we live? Like there's no stability. The waves are just going to be crashing. You know, it's not like if you like take two steps on land, you're not going to fall in and drown. Okay. But if you take one step into the ocean, anything can happen and you can drown and you can die. Right. <laughs> so, you know, the sea is definitely more dangerous than the, than the land. Okay. In terms of statistics and the nature of the things. So subhanAllah, can you just imagine it's, it's a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even created the earth as a stable ground for us. Yeah. So that we can even build buildings on it, you know, your two story house, <laughs> you know, or whatever building that you want to build you know, it can be stable on top of that. Um, but even on top of that, okay, even uh, going further, does anyone know what is underneath the earth, the earth's crust? So I'm taking you back to your science lessons over here. Yes, it's the core, it's the magma. Okay. So this the the earth is covered with water which is the sea of water but imagine if the first layer of the earth was not there the crust was not there the upper mantle was not there and it was just the mantle of the earth okay it was like a sea of fire yeah a sea of lava magma yes exactly imagine if that was uh you know poking out of the um of the earth like in large quantities we know that volcanoes have this okay and you can just imagine how much destruction a volcano can create imagine if you know there were it was, the whole thing was covered with that how would we live it would be impossible right so subhanallah we need to just understand that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the earth in such a perfect proportion in such a perfect way and it's just fascinating it's just really fascinating and it makes you think that hey have a lot more things to be grateful for right now when we go back to this ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says okay so 
walk on its slopes. So manakib, the mufassirin or the scholars of tafsir, they've said that manakib means slopes. However, you know, there is another meaning for manakib. Manakib actually means shoulders. Okay, so it's the plural of the word mankab. Mankab means shoulder, mankab, and manakib is shoulders. Okay, so it's as if Allah is saying, walk on the shoulders of the earth. Now, what shape is the shoulders? Okay, is it straight? No, is it flat? No, it's like a round, it's a round, curved slope, right? And just like that, you know, the earth is round, it has a slope on it. Yeah. Now, back in those days, the people they used to believe that the earth was completely flat. And we this is this is known, this is a historical known fact that people used to think that the earth was flat. And can you imagine that in Surah Mulk? Yes, not in a full a full on verse, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already alluded to the fact that the earth is round. Yeah. It's only like, you know, after a few hundred years that they finally were convinced that the earth was round. Yeah. So subhanAllah, even the wording that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses, it it sure it is completely factual with the natural world and the scientific discoveries that we're making today. Yeah. So it's, it's very interesting. I found that very interesting. Some still do think that the world is flat, isn't it? <laughs> so that's a very interesting topic. And, um, you know, it would be interesting to talk with them, maybe a bit frustrating as well, but let's, Continue on, okay? Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكُلُوا مِنْ رِزْقِ Now, rizq, in uh, Tafsir ibn Kathir, there is a beautiful hadith that is mentioned about rizq, and I want to tell it to you today. I want to, I want to share this with you today. So, Imam Ahmad recorded from Umar bin Khattab, anhu, that he heard the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say, لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ تَتَوَكَّلُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُّلِهِ so the so the Prophet is saying is that if you would trust in Allah as he truly should be trusted in, if you really trusted Allah to it to your full capacity, the way that Allah should be trusted in, he would surely provide for you as he provides for the birds. They set out in the morning with empty stomachs and return in the evening with full stomachs. Subhanallah. So, are the birds, do they, are they like worried and concerned and do they have anxiety and stress and depression about, you know, the future? And, um, you know, are they constantly, uh, you know, hungering over wealth and, you know, greedy for it? You know, are they living their whole life just to make sure that they have enough? No, subhanAllah, they have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay, and they go out into the morning, it doesn't mean that they're just sitting in their nests and they're just waiting for Allah to send an angel to give them food, no, they go out in the morning, okay, with empty stomachs, they go, they forage for the food, they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide the food, they go and get the food and they come back with full stomachs, right, yeah, and subhanAllah, you look at the birds flying in the sky. They ha they're so free, like free. They're so um, they're a source of inspiration, Subhanallah. So, you know, this is a metaphor for us, right? Um, and you can take from this hadith whatever you want, but indeed, having trust in Allah frees you, just like the birds are free in the sky because they have trust in Allah that Allah is keeping them up in the sky and Allah will provide for them just like that. If we trust in Allah the way that we, that the way that uh, Allah should be trusted in, it will make us free just like these birds. Yeah. Does everybody understand what I'm trying to say? You know, the rat race is real. This dunya is real. Okay. This dunya, I mean, the, you know, the struggle in this dunya is real. That's what I'm trying to say. But the key to unlocking the, Unlocking contentment is having trust. 
yeah, is having tawakkul on Allah and knowing that Allah will give us rizq. We're going to go out and find it, but we have absolute hope and certainty that yes, it's going to come, you know, in whatever shape or form. Yeah, so subhanAllah, you know, rizq, everybody, rizq. What the word rizq, it doesn't just mean food, okay? The word rizq means everything that you need to continue living on this earth. Yeah. So it's, it's not just your food, it's your money. Okay. It's um, also subhanAllah, you know, part of your risk is the people in your life as well. Your family members, your children is risk as well. Um, your spouse is risk as well. So for anyone who is, you know, single and they're trying to find someone know that if you have full trust in Allah, but you do the work and you go out and you try to find someone, you know, Allah will give you someone you know and same thing with like your education same thing with um you know fulfilling your hopes and your dreams and your goals in life you know you have a goal in life yes absolutely you have you should and you must but you don't just sit in your house and say yeah Allah give it to me you have to go out and you have to um try your best to to achieve that goal knowing that if I put the effort in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me the result and the result is in the hands of Allah. Yeah. So subhanAllah, rizq is everything that we need to uh, continue living in this earth. And having tawakkul on Allah is the most beautiful key to having contentment as well. So verse number 16, who is controlling the earth and the skies? Do you feel secure that he who, ho who holds authority in the heaven would not cause the earth to swallow you and suddenly it would sway? So what is this ayah saying? It's saying that, do you really feel secure? Do you feel safe? Okay. Do you really feel certain in the fact that, oh, the one in the heavens, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's not going to cause the earth to swallow you up, okay? That Allah is not going to make uh, a, uh, an earthquake happen or a sinkhole happen, you know? When we realize that we don't have much control, we, like even in these things, we don't know when an earthquake is going to happen. We don't know. We don't even know the weather, yeah? We can't even control the weather. We can't even control sometimes the weather inside our minds, yeah? <laughs> you know? Um, but subhanAllah, when we realize that we don't have that much control, okay, we leave the things that are not in our control up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay, and even the things that are in our control up to Allah, knowing that these are asbab that we just take, yeah, we don't put our tawakkul in the asbab, we don't put our tawakkul or our trust in the means, we put our trust in the creator of the means, yeah. So it's a very, it's a, it's a layered approach, you know, like, um, and it takes, you really have to do some pondering and digging and, and subhanAllah, like um, some self-reflection on how I'm living my life, you know, how much trust am I actually, how much am I trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually? And it's fine to take the asbab, it's fine to take the means, okay, and have savings and, you know, um, et cetera, et cetera you know, prepare for the future. Of course, that's not what anyone is saying. But, you know, we, the full contentment needs to be in your heart. Yeah. Okay. So when we fully trust in him and feel content that he is the best of planners and he is the one who will take care of us. Um, but yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the first verse that he has made the earth stable, but don't feel secure you know because just like you can be swallowed up by the ocean Allah can create a sinkhole like this or something uh, uh, you know a huge crack in the earth and they can swallow you up as well and Qarun okay Qarun who knows who Qarun was there's a whole story in the Quran dedicated to Qarun and Qarun was actually the cousin or one of the relatives of Musa alayhi salam. and he he had a lot of wealth okay and he was so arrogant and he was so boastful and um and he denied the prophet the prophet Musa alayhi salam, and he he thought that his wealth would save him but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this huge sinkhole and 
absolutely swallowed him up and his wealth and all his houses and everything in that sinkhole. And that's it. He was never to be seen again. So, you know, this is just a reminder for us. Okay. Verse number 17. Or do you feel secure that the one who holds authority in the heaven would not send against you a storm of stones? Then you would know how severe was my warning. So the punishment can come from above, okay, in the form of stones or very heavy rain that you can't stop. Or it can come from beneath in the form of earthquakes. It can come in the form of tsunamis or anything, you know. And these are just, this is directly addressing the kuffar of the Quraysh, okay, who were so arrogant and who were just denying and they're like, no, we're the best and, you know, we don't need to believe in you. These are reminders for those disbelievers to make them understand that they really don't have much control over so many things yes and to humble themselves so that they can realize the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now who knows who was punished with a storm of stones okay who was the the tribe that was punished with a storm of stones like Allah sent stones a rain of stones upon them so um Yes, so, very good. So, the people of the elephant. Yes, well done. So, we all know the story. So, in fact, also the people of Lut, okay, they were also uh, destroyed with a, a, a rain of stones. And also, Ashabul, Ashabul Fil, the companions of the elephant, were destroyed by a rain of stones as well. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this happening. Um you know, or anything like this happening, you know. So, yes. Okay, let's continue on. Verse number 18. And already had those before them denied, and how terrible was my reproach. So, as I said, the Quran is telling the kuffar that look at the people who came before you. You know their stories of the stories of Ad and Thamud and... um everybody all the prophets who were denied before and just see how their outcome was yeah it should make us reflect as well verse number 19 so who holds up the birds so do they not see the birds above them with wings outspread and sometimes folded in None holds them aloft except the most merciful. Indeed, he is of all things seeing. So subhanAllah, this verse is telling us to really amaze and wonder at the amazing creatures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and the different features that they have as well. So isn't it just amazing that man, we are here on the earth and for centuries and centuries, we have been looking at the birds in the sky and wishing that we could also fly like them. And, you know, in the end, what happened is that the structure of an airplane, yeah, the invention that lets humans fly in the sky, it was eventually inspired by the bird, yeah? And if you really look, think about it, every invention is inspired by nature or something within nature. Because nature is the direct, you know, it is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the direct creation. And, um, you know, it's just perfect, you know. Every single cell, every single atom is perfect in the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has created. And so us human beings, all we can do is copy, yeah. Um, so, yeah, subhanAllah, if you really think about it, it's true. Verse 20. Or who is it that could be an army for you? Jund Jund means soldiers or army. Okay? Soldiers. Lakum Yansurukum min Duni Rahman. Except the except the most merciful. The disbelievers are not in delusion. 
not but in delusion. So the Kuffar, okay, the Quraysh especially, they used to think that if they had more tribesmen and family members to be soldiers for them, then they would be safe. And that's why they used to love having sons and they used to bury their daughters because the daughters, they, how are the daughters going to fight in a battle? Yeah, they would love having the sons, but they would bury the daughters. Why? Because, yeah, you know, um, there was no point for them. However, and this is the delusion that they were in. And they used to think that, yes, if we have more men in the family and more men in our tribe, then we can protect ourselves and we can be the most powerful tribe. But no, no one is safe from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he wills it. Yes, not even your hundred tribesmen and uh, soldiers. But, okay, min dunir rahman, who can help you other than the most merciful? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ar-Rahman. He is the most merciful. He will not send a punishment until a warner has come and has fulfilled his duty. Yes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives many, many chances to many, many people. So let us take those chances for us to become better human beings. And the very last verse for today is, or who is it that could provide for you if he withheld his provision, but they persisted in insolence and aversion. Now, if you think about it, the Quraysh, the Kuffar, everybody, where, where were they living in? They were living in Mecca, yeah? Now, Mecca, is it in a beautiful green mountainous, area with like a lot of crops and mashallah so much like you know gardens and all these kind of things no they were living in pretty much the middle of the desert right so the arabs they were actually very very dependent on trade for their provision so in surah li ilafi quraish in surah quraish okay they used to go for rihlat shita'i was saif they go used to go on a journey um, to um, the north and the south to get provisions for their city, you know. They used to go on a caravan and a journey and they used to basically do like business with them and bring bring all those exports back into their country. So imagine if that, you know, that line of income or that provision was completely cut off. What would they do? They'll have to, you know, they're going to be living in the desert. Yeah. Yeah. So subhanAllah, you can't really grow much in the desert. And imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala withheld his provision. So, you know, but they still continue in insolence and aversion. So my dear brothers and sisters, you know, this lesson, it is directly addressing the kuffar, okay, the disbelievers, in order for them to believe, in order for them to take a lesson and to let them use their reason. Because remember the Qur'an is a book that appeals to your reason and to your logic. It's not just telling you to uh, follow blindly, okay? When you truly understand that human beings, us as human beings, we don't really have much in our control. And the fact that this amazing world that we are in is constructed so perfectly, it, auto it has to bring you to the conclusion that there is a maker, it has to bring you to the conclusion that there is an all-powerful, all-seeing, all-knowing Allah who is controlling everything and who knows everything, yeah? So, whenever we read these verses as well, we should feel the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay? We shouldn't be scared because we are believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, um, and we should have that mixture of hope and fear, yeah? As I said at the start. So go ahead and comment some main things that you have learned from this lesson. I'm going to go ahead and type them. So what are some main things that you have learned from this lesson? Yes, Allah knows everything we do publicly and privately. Yeah. The hadith about the gathering. Oh, that's great. Alhamdulillah, that's at the start that the angels are going to be um, gathering with us when we uh, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember him in our gatherings. 
yeah, the different ways of punishment. Evidence that the earth is round. Yes, that was very interesting. Yes, Allah provides sustenance. Provides rizq, okay? Yes. So the the birds in the sky, birds in the sky. Yeah. And so many other things, so many other lessons, mashallah. Yes. So inshallah I hope that you can take these lessons and apply them in your life in different aspects okay so tomorrow inshallah what we will learn is um the fact that Al Al the almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has endowed people with sight hearing and reasoning so that they can be on the right path we're going to be talking about how allah has spread man on this earth and how allah will gather him one day and only allah knows the time of the day of judgment we're going to be talking a little bit about that and who is the one who holds the ultimate fate of mankind? It is only Allah. So we're going to be finishing the tafsir of Surah Mulk tomorrow. We're going to go all the way up to, to verse 30, inshallah. It's going to be amazing. And on Friday, okay, so tomorrow is Thursday. That's what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do tomorrow. And on Friday, inshallah, what, what are we going to do, everybody? Type in the comment box. On Friday, inshallah, what we are going to do is we are going to have a mini quiz and we will have a free hadith lesson about the hadith of Jibreel. And this is one of my favorite, favorite hadiths. There is so much to talk about in this, in this one hadith. That's why I'm doing a whole lesson on it. Okay. So inshallah, we're going to finish Surah Mulk tomorrow. And on Friday, we will do the hadith of Jibreel. And the, inshallah, um, that will be like an example lesson for the hadith course. So if you do want to join the Hadith course, go ahead and type this link. Um, but yeah, uh, as you guys know, my 12-week Quranic Arabic course, Alhamdulillah, we have nearly, you know, Alhamdulillah, I can't even, I don't even know how many students have enrolled, Alhamdulillah, nearly 10 or 15 students have enrolled so far. And we still have our, um, you know, September and December session open for the 12 week certified Quranic Arabic course where you will learn everything, um, including grammar, tafsir, more tafsir classes like this. And you will get support from me personally as your ustada, as your teacher. And by the end of 12 weeks, you will have the ability to understand 70% of the Quran. Just imagine that. It's just amazing. So for more information, message me on Facebook or Instagram at Good Tree Arabic Academy or email me on goodtreearabic at gmail.com. And inshallah, I will see you tomorrow. So jazakumullah khair, my dear students, for tuning in to this tafsir class. And I will see you tomorrow, inshallah. So jazakumullah khair. And please share this with anyone that you know. And I will see you soon. Okay, everybody. Assalamu alaikum.